Reverend Elaine Marshall and Reverend Doris Birch and Reverend Robinson. God bless you. Scripture has already been read in your hearing. She read 1 Thessalonians, I think she read 1 through 11. I'm centering in on the 8th verse. Go home in your meditation moment. Read that, the 1 Thessalonians, and meditate on it. I also would like to tell you to ask you to read Matthew chapter 25. When you get out, when you get a chance, meditate on it during this Advent season. But like I said, I won't be before you long. Just want to take a few minutes and preach from the subject, the Christian hope. The Christian hope. Would y'all pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, most gracious, loving, and forgiving Father. Come once again in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for just being God and being God all by yourself. Now, Lord, it's preaching time. And unless you come and send down a fresh anointing, I can do nothing. So, Lord, I pray now that you unstop ears and your open hearts so that your word might fall on fertile soil. And, Lord, if you do these things, I'll be so careful to give your name the glory, honor, and praise. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer, and the children of God all said, amen, 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 and amen. The Christian hope. This is the first Sunday of Advent, of the Advent season. And like I said, I had two passages of scripture that ought to help me explain the Christian hope. What is hope? Thomas Fuller speaks, speaking of hope, said if we were if we were not hope for hope, our heart would be well, our heart would break. O.S. Martin said there is no medicine like hope, no incentive so great and no tonic so powerful as the expectation of something tomorrow. Now, I, I, every one of us, from the pool pit to the door, saved or unsaved, we, we hope for something every day. You may not realize it, but you hope for something every day. Every time, for instance, every time we leave, and leave home in this world today, we hope we return safely. Yes? How many hope for a new job tomorrow, or even a better job, or just to have somewhere to go? Yes, we hope every day. Yes, hope for the safety of our children. Yes, hope is something that is needed in every life. Without hope, life becomes a despairing enterprise. In other words, hopeless, devoid, of any means of survival. For you know, my people, life without hope is a life that is dying. Amen. So as we engage ourselves on this first Sunday of Advent, we want to deal with the idea of hope. For hope is the imperishable, unseen theme of Advent, the season of waiting and anticipation. For it is hope and hope alone that gives meaning and purpose to such a waiting. So in keeping with the theme of this holy season of Advent, we now turn to the text that was read in your hearing this morning. For it is within this text we come to see the needed reality of hope in the lives of us humans. For Paul, in that famous 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, give us a wonderful trinity of virtue, faith, hope, and love, of which he said the greatest of these is love. However, in our text this morning, he placed these qualities in a different order, giving the honor to hope, faith, and love. And for Paul, hope is not passive. For he, he sees Hope as a helmet of salvation, a protection in the war against the flesh and the devil. How many of you know that we live in a hostile world? Yeah, can't turn on the TV 
without a shooting. Yes, but Psalm 42 and 11 tells us that hope thou in God. Oh, somebody ought to say, hope thou in God. Yes, I stopped by to tell you that hope is vital in the necessity of life, a gift that God wants us to have. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. Yeah, somebody ought to thank him. For if it was not for hope, where would we be? Come on, somebody. Hope to press on. Yes, hope to press on to the high call. Hope to endure. Yeah, we all go through something. Hope to face tomorrow. Hope, yes, hope to look to the future with great expectation. If you can't do nothing else, you can hope. Yes, I hope that better days, I don't know about you, church, but better days is coming. Anybody hope for better days? I know I hope for better days. Yes, hope that rests in anticipation of God's promises. If God promises, we, can, we know it's going to come to pass. We know it's going to come to pass. For God promised that he would send a child, a savior, and his name would be Jesus of Nazareth. And he would bring hope to a dying world. This is the Advent season. It is not all about gifts and presents and decorating trees. Yo, God sent his only son so that we might have hope. Yes, his only begotten son to the world. So his people may have hopeful hearts and hope for the future. Yes, hope thou in God. I hope I to be rooted and assured and guaranteed in the coming of Christ. For I heard the Lord say in the book of Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans I have for you. Declare the Lord plans to prosper. You and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Yes, anybody believe that this morning? Yes, I stopped by to tell you this morning, better days are coming. Just hold on a little, little, little while longer. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hopeful, be hopeful in everything. Yes, better days are coming. For when Christians, uh, yeah, better days are coming for as Christians. When we, when, when God placed the heaven of salvation and we put on the full armor of God, yes, we are representing God. From head to toe, we belong to God. Yes, our God is a present tense verb for you school teachers. God is. He's doing it right now. He is, I hope. I don't know what you're hoping for, but hold on. God is. He is, I hope. Hope thou in God, my people. Yes, remember, there's never any lacking of hope, for our hope is in him. Yes, therefore Paul urges those Christians that are at the church of Thessalonica and us today, if they if they're are to be successful, not only against the evil of darkness, but also the conflict with, with, with and within themselves. They must clothe themselves with the breastplate of faith and, and love for that which would ultimately give them the victory and guarantee them the victory was for them to put on the helm of the hope. Do you know how much stuff is in, included in salvation? You're free. Yes. Yes, said Paul, to, 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 these, to these Christians, have faith and love, but forever be hopeful for God. For God is with us. God is our helmet of salvation. And you know, saints of God, as we engage in this holy season of Advent, we must constantly remind ourselves Christ has come, and God promised he will return again. Therefore, Paul alone we God urges us to be sober. Yes, Brother Eric, God promised us to be sober and ready. In other words, 
He said, and be watchful. Be alert. Paul is telling in the text, let us who are of, are of the day be sober, not intoxicated of the pleasures, by the pleasures of this world. How many of you know sin will get you drunk? Sin will have you doing more than what you, sin will get you drunk. It'll have you doing all kinds of things. Yeah, sin will get you drunk. Sin will blind you from what God is trying to do with you. Yeah, how many of you know all the devil needs is a foothold? I think the old saying says you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. He gonna come on in and set up a camp. Yes, which will cause many of us not to be ready when Christ comes. The Bible say that the devil, our enemy, he seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah, he's our adversary. And I talk about to tell you, without Christ, anybody gonna pray with me? Without Christ, there is no hope. But with Christ, somebody I'll say, thank God for Jesus. But with Christ, all things is possible. Now in the next three weeks, you can tell me if it don't come true. In the next three weeks, many of us will be asked the question, are we ready for Christmas? And if the truth be told, Brother Charles, most of us will be ready for Christmas, no matter how much effort it will take. We ain't want to disappoint anybody. We are gonna be ready for Christmas, but it puzzles me, Sister Carmen, it puzzles me, the effort we'll put in to get ready for Christmas. The effort we'll put in to, to, to stroke our own ego. But what about the effort we put in for Christ Jesus? Yes, as Christians, as Christians who proclaim to be followers of Christ, the question we need to be asking ourselves and others during this Advent season, are you prepared for the coming of Christ? Yes, is your life in order? In other words, let me break it down and lay it in the light. Do you have your house in order? Have you swept around your own front porch? Yes. Are you ready to go back? Yes. Many, many, in case they say amen, say ouch. Many who sit here this morning may think we are ready because of past events. Somebody think because they've been baptized. They're on their way to hell. But I think I heard an old saying, it said you come in a dry devil and leave a wet devil. I'm telling you, baptism do not make you ready for Christ. Or maybe you've been coming every Sunday. Your membership been here at Parkwood all your life. You've been sitting on your mama's pew. Like the pastor said earlier, you ain't gonna ride mama's coattail in. Yes, or you sing on the best choir, and you got the most beautiful voice. Let me tell you, if your heart ain't right, you won't be singing up there. You won't be singing up there. You got to be right to go up there. Yes, and because of our, and you know, a lot of things because of our deeds. I've been an officer in the church. I've been running around raggedy, running myself raggedy for the church. And you think you're on your way to heaven anyhow. But I'm going to tell you, it don't work that way. And you know, my people, some believers, some believers feel if they have a get into heaven free card. And uh, let me see something from Pastor. Let me throw this one in for free. Because we have membership here at Parkwood with the visible church. Do not make us a member of the invisible church. I'll meditate on that for a little while. Somebody ought to think about that. Yeah, that mean, that mean you got to be ready at all times. You got to be watchful. You can't be a, uh, that was just a little cuss word, or that was just a little slip up. You got to be ready. Everybody. See, everybody who's talking about heaven, Sister Jones, everybody that's singing about heaven, everybody that's crying out, Lord, Lord, 
won't see the Lord. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. Which brings me to the second passage of scripture that I mentioned this morning. I asked you to read Matthew 25. Meditate on it. Yeah, Matthew chapter 25, where Jesus, I'm going to give you some of the story. Not all the story, but I'll give you some of it. Jesus informed his disciples concerning his second coming. Jesus used a parable, most of you know it, about ten virgins, five foolish and five wise. Yes, we, I, as I said, we all know the story. These virgins all look the same, Brother Eric. <laughs> outwardly. All of them look the same outwardly. All of them. They were going into a wedding feast. So all of them, most of the time, you dress them in the same dress. All the bridegrooms had on, had on the same dress. I mean, all the bride maids had on the same dress. And they all was carrying the same lamp. Yes. In other words, they look like us this morning. Because all of us got on our Sunday best. All of us look churchy. Yes. All of us look sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire, fire baptized. Yes. We all look the same in our church clothes, our church attire. From head to toe, Sister Laverne, we all look like we're ready to meet the Lord. Yes, outward appearance. But I stop by to tell you, God looks at, at the heart. God don't care about outward appearance. God don't care about your designer clothes. God don't care about Louis Vuitton. St. John, Sister Diane, God don't care about that. He don't care about your four-inch heels or your double wins or not. Yes, yes. Being prepared to meet Jesus is not an outward appearance. Design outfits from head to toe. I don't care if you put on Gucci from head to toe. It don't, it don't get you into heaven. If you make a fashion statement, if you make a fashion statement every Sunday of the month, and we talking about you. It still ain't going to get you into heaven on judgment day. Somebody ought to pray with me. Yeah, therefore, we must be ready and watchful for the Lord's second coming. Because he tells us in his word, he's coming again. And no man, not even the sun itself, know the hour or the day, he will come. So I'm getting ready to go to my seat. But we must. We must stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For, we, for you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be ready. Be ready. Be prepared. Tell your neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready? He's coming back, whether you like it or not. He's coming. You ain't going to have time. The, the, the slip on shoes and fix, fix something. You're going to have to be ready. Because they say if a thief knew someone was going to break in his house at night, he would be ready. You know the Lord is coming. He ain't breaking in. You know he's coming. And thanks to God, he's going to start right here at the household of faith. He's going to root out of us. Like I say, wheat and terror, they look the same. But he said, leave it alone. Let it grow. I'll separate it. He's going to put the goats on one side and the sheep on the other side. I pray that you are sheep. I pray that you are sheep this morning. I'm getting ready to go, Minister of Music. I'm getting ready to go. But I heard, I heard, good God from glory, I heard the songwriter say, yeah, he said, my hope, come on, church, my hope, my hope, my hope is built on nothing less. Anybody gonna pray with me? Then Jesus blood and righteousness. I dare not trust a sweetest frame. But holy, 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 lean to his name. On Christ, on Christ, not my mama, not my sister, not my friend, but on Christ. The solid rock. The solid rock. The rock that won't give away. The, the, the cornerstone on Christ, the solid rock, I stand, and all other ground, all other ground, 
is sick and saved. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And amen. I pray. I pray that something was said or something was done that will be a blessing for you on this week.